Bernie's gone, but the left goes marching on. So Bernie Sanders is out of the race. But the truly amazing fact is that he was ever in it to the extent that he was. Nobody, including him, thought he would get this far or do this well. For a generation or more in America, the word socialist has been an epithet. Sanders wore it as a badge of pride, railing against billionaires and bankers to huge enthusiastic crowds. A curmudgeonly septuagenarian who most Democrats hadn't even heard of this time last year won around 20 states against Hillary Clinton, a well-funded candidate with unrivaled name recognition who thought she was heading for a coronation. And in so doing, he galvanised the young, the trade union members, and a significant section of the white working class, who the Democratic Party has lost over the last 40 years. Claims that he'd be an electoral liability fall wide of the mark. Polls show, had he won, he'd have a far better chance of beating Trump than Clinton. So how did that happen? Well, just as Donald Trump's ascent can really only be understood within the context of the rise of the extreme right globally, so Sanders' impressive showing only really makes sense when examined beyond America. Since the economic crash, the left across the Western world has been rallying, and it's not difficult to see why. The financial industry caused the recession and left governments to foot the bill. But wealthy bankers bought themselves out of that crisis by making the poor pay. Even as wages have stagnated, jobs have been lost, tuition fees rocketed and services slashed, the bonuses kept rolling in. After years of protest, standard bearers of anti-austerity gained widespread appeal. Popular frustration finally found an electoral voice. Politicians who stood not just for office, but for progressive change, started to win not just the argument, but votes. Caesar won in Greece, Jeremy Corbyn won the Labour leadership, Podemos emerged in Spain, the left bloc props up the government in Portugal. Which brings us back to Sanders. Because like his counterparts across the globe, he's proved that radical politics can make an impact at the polling booth. The question is, now what? Win or lose, voting will never be enough. Poor people can't simply elect a better life for themselves and expect that vested interests won't resist them at every turn. That's not how Western democracy works. Power, said the abolitionist Frederick Douglass, concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. These movements are now more vital than ever. They must continue to push for greater economic justice and social equality. Sanders may have stopped running for president, but his supporters can't stand still. Donald Trump does not want to be the president of the United States. From the outset, Trump's camp would have been satisfied to see him polling at 12 percent, 